I suggest we start our conversation about wedding skirts and petticoats from discussing their simplest kinds. They are straight skirt, A-line bell-shaped skirt, A-line fishtail skirt, classic fishtail skirt, and flared skirt. Straight skirt. There are lots of techniques for constructing straight skirts. Lots of methods for taking measurements, fitting, calculating darts, etc. I will not focus on them in this course because they have been described in great detail by other authors. Besides, I have to say that the classic straight skirt is not something you see very often in wedding fashion. For this reason, I will start from the A-line or bell-shaped skirt. Let us take a look at its pattern. You can see the A-line skirt pattern drawn in half the actual size on the writing board. I purposely made it half the actual size because we are going to work with a half-scale dress form to make a mock-up and polish up the shape of the skirt. And it is simply easier to demonstrate everything on a small pattern. I have been using this pattern for about 20 years. I bet you will be surprised by the fact that the same pattern is used for the back and for the front of the skirt if you see it for the first time now. The thing is that I use it as a template to draw a custom pattern for the client. You need the following measurements to customize the standard pattern. Waist circumference, stomach circumference, hip circumference, and skirt length. This pattern includes seam allowances, 2 cm along all vertical edges and 1.2 cm along the top edge and along the bottom edge. The half-scale pattern has 1 cm and 0.6 cm seam allowances correspondingly. Let us imagine that our client's figure fully corresponds with the shape of our half-scale dress form and adjust the initial pattern based on its parameters. First of all, I measure the initial pattern along the waistline, the stomach line, about 12 cm below waistline, and the hip line. Please note that I purposely made no notch at the hip line level on the initial pattern because you must determine this level yourself on your client's body. I want to show you a very precise and widely used way of measuring the hip circumference with an improvised wide measuring tape. You take a wide strip of paper or plastic and stick a measuring tape on it. I recommend you always use it for measuring hip circumference from now on. It will allow you to simultaneously measure the thighs and the most prominent part of your client's stomach, which will make the hip circumference measurement a lot more precise. To take this measurement, I find the widest part of the client's body the half-scale dress form in our case, below the waistline. It is the hip line level. In my case, the hip line is situated 18 centimeters below waistline and the half-scale hip circumference is 47 centimeters. I stick to the following rules when calculating side seam configuration. I leave the side seam line as it is if the hip circumference is under 104 centimeters. I shift the side seam line 1 centimeter towards the back of the skirt if the hip circumference is between 104 and 116 centimeters. And I shift the side seam line 2 centimeters towards the back of the skirt if the hip circumference exceeds 116 centimeters. All measurements taken off the mock-up are written down on the writing board together with their actual values. The half values are put in brackets. Waist circumference 74 centimeters 37 centimeters Stomach circumference 12 centimeters i.e. measured 12 centimeters below waistline 90 centimeters 45 centimeters 
hip circumference, 18 centimeters, i.e. measured 18 centimeters below waistline, 94 centimeters, 47 centimeters, skirt length, 110 centimeters, 55 centimeters. First, I will do all pattern adjustment calculations with the actual full-size values, and then I will divide the resulting values in half and apply corresponding adjustments to the half-scale pattern. You will see the entire adjustment process. The first thing I need to do to calculate adjustments to the pattern is determine the position of the side seam and the widths of all darts. It is compulsory to add 2 cm looseness along the hip line in the A-line skirt like ours. I know it from personal experience that many clients ask for a very tight-fitting skirt hoping it will reshape their figure in a flattering way. In reality, it is very uncomfortable. The skirt keeps wrinkling and the wearer feels very awkward. Even if your client insists on a very narrow skirt, I still recommend you should add that 2 cm looseness during the cutting. You can always narrow it down later if necessary. In this case, the hip circumference will be as follows. 47 centimeters plus 1 centimeter equals 48 centimeters. The aggregate width of all darts on the skirt is calculated as difference between hip circumference with the added allowance and waist circumference. 48 centimeters minus 37 centimeters equals 11 centimeters. The aggregate width of all darts is 11 centimeters in our case. Keep this value before your eyes. Since my client's hip circumference is 94 centimeters, I do not shift the side seam line. It stays just how it is. Now, let us distribute the aggregate dart width between the side dart and the darts at the front and at the back of the skirt. The total width of the side dart makes a half of the aggregate dart width. 11 centimeters divided by 2 equals 5.5 centimeters. There is 5.5 centimeters left from the initial aggregate value. I divide it in three. Two-thirds will fall upon the back dart and one-third upon the front dart. 5.5 centimeters divided by three equals about 1.8 centimeters. Hence, the front dart has a width of 1.8 centimeters and the back dart has a width of 3.6 centimeters. It is highly recommended to split the back dart in two separate darts if the width exceeds 2.5 centimeters. It is better in terms of technique because it will be easier to sew and press two darts rather than one. The seams will settle down flat and not stick up. It is also better with regard to the fit. As you know, the more princess seams or darts there are, the smoother the shape of the garment is and the better it fits on the client's body. So I divide our 3.6 cm wide back dart in two darts, each with a width of 1.8 cm. I write all dart widths on the writing board. Side dart, 5.5 cm. Two back darts, 1.8 cm each, and one front dart, 1.8 cm. This means I will mark 2.7 cm on either side of the center of the side dart and 0.9 cm either side of the centers of the front dart and the two back darts. We need to divide these values in half for the half-scale pattern, i.e. mark 
1.3 to 1.4 centimeters for the side dart and 0.4 to 0.5 for the front dart and the back darts. Now, let us talk about the positions of the front dart and the back darts. According to the theory, a classic type skirt has side darts with an average length of 14 to 16 centimeters. If your client has narrow hips, it is better to shift the back dart 1 to 2 centimeters closer to the side seam line. And if she has full hips, then you should, on the contrary, shift it 1 to 2 centimeters closer to the center of the back. The front dart is 9 to 11 centimeters long. It is better to shift it 1 to 2 centimeters closer to the side seam line if your client has a flat stomach or 1 to 2 centimeters closer to the center of the front if she has a bit of a belly. The initial position of the front dart is found by dividing a half of the front in half and the initial position of the back darts by dividing a half of the back in three equal parts. A good look at your client's figure will be enough to estimate whether she has a flat stomach or a prominent belly and how wide her hips are. And then you can decide whether you need to shift the darts closer to the side or closer to the center, if at all. There are, in fact, a great many theories, methods, and discussions on how to construct these darts and the top edge of the straight skirt and the bell-shaped skirt. But I will not focus on them here as I said before. I will show you how to adjust the front and the back of our pattern and then we will move to other skirt types.